I'm joined in studio by the man who has said that compared to Elon Musk and uh, Kylian Mbappe, he is much undervalued. <laughs> Michael O'Leary, good morning. Good morning, Pat. How are you? The top item on your agenda is really the passenger cap at Dublin Airport. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we have an absurd situation at Dublin Airport at the moment, Pat. We've just opened a second runway that takes the runway capacity at Dub- the traffic capacity at Dublin Airport up to about 60 million passengers a year. But we're being told all the airlines we can't use it because of the 2007 planning restriction on the second terminal we, uh, around fears over road access to Dublin Airport. Now, in 2007, about 5% of the traffic came by bus. Today, that figure is over 20%. There are no particular traffic uh, pinch points around the airport. And yet we're being told uh, as a country and as an airport, we can't exceed the 32 million cap because that was the planning restriction in 2007. It's absurd. And the solution to this is the Minister for Transport needs to act. It is very simple in my view. This is a planning restriction from 2007 that's completely outdated. It is absolutely about road access to Dublin Airport. Everybody was worried in 2007 if Dublin Airport gets to 32 million passengers, there'll be traffic jams all over, swords, Dublin Mm. Airport. There isn't. It's not an issue. So it's not a noise issue. It's not a facilities issue. We have this bizarre arcane restriction that is about road access to and from Dublin Airport. And if we had a Minister for Transport who was uh, modestly interested in aviation or even modestly interested in economic growth and development, which his own aviation policy is at the heart of his own aviation, he would fix this. Now, how does he fix it? Because, uh, you know, the on-board plan all is a law unto itself. It is. Uh, but I mean, the clear fix for this would be to issue an instruction to the I- Irish Aviation Authority to say that 2007 applica- the, the planning restriction, you can ignore that. You can in, uh, add the extra slots and let's go ahead. I appreciate he may be sued by some locals, but actually, I don't think those legal actions would have any. This planning restriction or the planning concern from 2007 no longer has any relevance. You know how green our minister is, our minister for transport and his long-term objective would be to limit us going for those weekends in Prague or whatever it is. That's the long-term objective because it's not a particularly good way to protect the planet, he would say. Yeah, and the bizarre thing here is all of this growth is happening on new, greener, cleaner aircraft. We carry the, Our new aircraft carry 20% more passengers but burn 20% less fuel. The bizarre thing in this country is we have a green transport minister and a green tourism minister. And the only thing the pair of them have managed to do in four years is come up with a traffic cap at Dublin Airport that limits the growth of transport and limits the growth of tourism. I think too often the kind of debate here is about, well, we can't go away for those weekends away. The real issue here is tourism in this country. Nobody focuses on the tourism industry in this country. We're opening up new hotels, new restaurants, phenomenal facilities in the wild Atlantic way, the Midlands. I mean, they're advertising traffic tourism now in Offaly and Westmead. I never thought in my lifetime I'd hear it. But unless we keep welcoming in European visitors, UK visitors, unless we keep the cost of air access here low, we are going to lose out enormous numbers of passengers, uh, jobs and investment to other lower cost European countries. So we're getting 49 new aircraft next summer. And the question I put to Eamon Ryan at our meeting on 7th of March, how many of these aircraft, Minister, do you want me to put in Dublin, Cork and Shannon? And he's there giving you a kind of gormless smile, you know, nothing. We want to put some of these aircraft in. I would want to put five aircraft in Dublin next year. I could open about 25 new routes and uh, we could grow traffic in Dublin by about a million passengers. And yet, while the Minister for Transport and his Green Minister for Tourism both sit on their hands, uh, smiling gormlessly at us, these aircraft and these routes and these jobs are going to be exported elsewhere to Europe. So the message to the minister is get your finger out. Well, the message is green ministers don't work. They don't deliver. Uh, they're useless at transport and infrastructure. I mean, I think one of the big, I've, you know, you've been very good, I think, on this program about the children's hospital. Yeah. We are hopeless at infrastructure. But because we live in a, in a country with a four-year electoral cycle, we should not have a ministry for transport, energy and communications. It's a mishmash. We should have an energy, a ministry for infrastructure. I mean, we're no, in this country, population is going to grow to about 6 million people by 2030, 2035. Where are we going to house them? Probably all outside the M50. Why are we not working on an exterior ring road outside the M50 today? The Children's Hospital, it's 125,000 square feet, but it's an elliptical oval building that's only three stories high and it's in the wrong location. I've built uh, an office block beside myself in Swords, exactly the same size, 125,000 square feet. I built it for 22 million euros. Now, it's not fitted out, 
But if you build infrastructure in a timely and sensible manner, it, it will come online. But we don't do that. We wait until it's too late. One of the things you said in passing, Michael, was unrestricted, you know, and the people in North County Dublin are complaining, as you know, about noise. And uh, we've done some reports from there. And yep. sitting in someone's back garden, it can be horrendous. It isn't. So so if it's unrestricted, it's going to get worse for those people. Firstly, it's not unrestricted. I mean, there's a physical limitation on Dublin Airport. There's two runways. So that you, yeah. the max you can do, you'll cap out here at 50, 60 million passengers. There is noise at Dublin Airport, but Dublin Airport has been there since 1939. So anybody who's bought a house out there knew the airport was there. By opening up two runways, you've divided the noise uh, over any, like St. Margaret's, for example, yeah. used to have 100% of the flights taking off. Now they only have 50%. Of it. So it is getting significantly better. The issue that come, and we're using now quieter aircraft. Our aircraft now are 50% quieter than they were just 15 years ago. Aer Lingus no longer have the noisy 747s. There is an awful lot of nonsense talked about noise at Dublin Airport. We've set up a video on our website. We went in and measured the noise in St. Margaret's, in Ballybottle, and in uh, Clock, uh, in, um, in Baroiva and Swords. The noise, uh, the normal noise is about 52 decibels. It rises to about 56, 57 decibels with an aircraft overhead and that's outside in the garden. And these, yeah. so it, uh, to put that in some context, um, the uh, O'Connell Bridge, 72 decibels. Uh, Sydney Parade Avenue, 74 decibels. We're not talking about intolerable noise here. I mean, and yet we have to listen to, I mean, I, you know, if there's an issue there, we don't fly between midnight and seven o'clock in the morning. So this myth that everybody can't sleep at night, if you're measuring noise in your bedroom, you're not going to hear anything at all. There is not a noise problem at Dublin Airport. We're investing massively in new, quieter aircraft and the two runways have the noise problem for any individual community yeah, at Dublin but Airport. But yet the, the, the lived experience of people when uh, our report, I think it was Barry White went out and he was in the garden having trying to have conversations with people in the garden. And people are entitled to use their amenity for a bit of sunshine and fresh air, Absolutely. even if it's laden with aviation exhaust. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? The, the, I do, listening to the noise I, I, come, of I, the plane I, coming over and they couldn't continue their conversation. Uh, that's actually not, not true. But we can't have... Dublin Airport is a piece of national infrastructure. You know, yes, if you're in, in the neighbourhood of Dublin Airport, there will be a modest noise between the hours of 7 o'clock in the morning and 10 o'clock in the evening, but it is modest. If you're inside your house, you're not going to hear anything with the radio or the TV on. You're not going to hear anything at all. But you have to accept if you live in the environs of Dublin Airport, there will be some modest noise. If, you, in, if you're on the railway line in Mullingar, the, ra the train comes through X number of days. Those are the realities of living. If you bought a house somewhere in the environs of Dublin Airport, you, gener you generate significant wealth because of the increase in value of houses around Dublin Airport. It is a big generator of the economy in North County Dublin. So I don't belittle the noise issue, but this myth that we can't live here and it's impossible and the primary school children can't hear themselves speak inside in classrooms is a myth. It's bogus. Moving on to the other uh, major... By the way, can I just give yeah. you one fact? Dublin Airport in 2022 uh, received 26,000 noise complaints. 24,400, more than 90% came from one individual. Like, it's a Busy joke what goes on. I know, I mean, nothing else to do out there. Uh, the other big aviation story is, of yep. course, the Aer Lingus pilots uh, impending or threatened strike. Sure. Uh, what implications does that have for Ryanair? I think you know, if, I if mean, they get a, ri a significant rise, is that leading to demands from... Well, no, we've already negotiated a pay increase with our pilots post-COVID. We restored, we had pay cuts during COVID. We restored those pay cuts and we're going through, I think, about a four or five year pay deal with our pilots now where they'll get... I think it's something of the order of 15 or 18 percent over a four year period. Um, the Aer Lingus pilots didn't get a pay increase coming out of COVID. Um, but I think what they got with the Labour Court, I mean, about nine and a half percent over two or three was more than fair. It's certainly ahead of inflation, which is currently about two percent. And most of the people making the noise here, the senior captains are on but 250,000 a year. I think it's indefensible that these guys are, are blackmailing uh, Aer Lingus and the public over strikes during the summer uh, holidays when, you know, they've already been offered a 9.5% pay increase on, for the senior pilots, they're on 250000 a year. Uh, they're more than well paid. If it was the cabin crew or it was the baggage handlers, you'd have a bit more sympathy. But these guys, this is just industrial blackmail. By the way, I think it'll be unsuccessful. There will be very little disruption coming out of these Erlingus strikes. Erlingus accounts for about 30% of the traffic at Dublin Airport. We're, we are about twice their size. 
Aer Lingus is also part of the IAG group. So BA will put more flights in from Heathrow. Do they have I, yeah. capacity in oh, summer? Yeah. Because in summer, they have spare aircraft. I mean, look, BA are dealing with strikes on a pretty regular basis. All of us are dealing with French ATC strikes on a regular basis. So we do have spare aircraft. We have spare capacity. I would hope it won't come to strikes within Aer Lingus. But people should not panic. You know, Aer Lingus Regional will continue to operate the regional services. Iberia, BA will fill in a lot of the Heathrow and the big connecting services and the transatlantic And do you have any spare capacity? We have very little spare... I mean, sorry, we... Because your we, load factors are so high. We could add... We have about six or eight spare aircraft, but, you know, we could certainly... We will certainly add in some extra flights, but you get very short notice of if there's yep. going to be strikes here. But people are... You know, the airline industry last year, we had 63 days of French ATC strikes. And a French ATC strike will cancel more flights than an Aer, uh, Aer Lingus pilots. So I would hope there'll be a settlement. I would strongly urge Aer Lingus to uh, stand up to these uh, pilots and I would strongly urge the pilots union. If you're getting 250 grand a year and you've been, Labour Court has awarded you 9.5%, take it. People want to know how come people are arriving on Ryanair flights and other flights without documentation? Yeah, because they flush them down the toilet uh, or they arrive at Dublin Airport and they flush them down the toilet. We're now working with the Department of Justice. I mean, one of the things we have to do here is we send everybody who's non-EU to, you have to get their visas checked. We're now taking photographs of their passports at the visa check desk and we want to send that information to the Department of Justice. So if somebody shows up, we as the airline will be able to say, here's the passport, here's the, 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 here's the passport, here's where we think they were sitting. The problem is they flush, they, they don't have, they show up here. I mean, it's a complete scam. And these are not refugees. One of the things that drives me nuts in Ireland is we treat people as refugees who are coming from the UK or from France. Nobody got to Ireland from Afghanistan or from Kenya or from Nigeria or from Syria uh, on a direct flight because there aren't any. So you are not fleeing ref you're not fleeing persecution in the UK or in Germany. Now, we should look after refugees. I have great sympathy for the Ukrainians. But people who are arriving in here from the UK, France or other EU countries, uh, we should be turning them back, say here, back to the EU countries where you came mm -hmm. from. But the challenge for though that border control is they arrive here, but they have no documentation and it's very difficult to track what flight did they come on, what seat were they sitting in because they tear up or flush their documentation yeah. down the toilets. And all, right. all of them have documentation when they board when their they Ryanair board. flight at the other side. Okay, well, uh, so many more things and we didn't really even get round to why you're more uh, or you should be more valued than Mbappe and Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I deliver much more for Ireland and for Europe than certainly than Kylian Mbappe. Not quite as much as Erling Haaland, but nevertheless.